Hey, Shalom family. Just want to start off by giving all praise to the Most High Yah, to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, <clears throat> in reverence and deference of his only begotten son, Yahushua Hamashiach, who they call Jesus the Christ. Coming back to do another video. Thank you to everyone that has liked the video, that has subscribed, left a comment on ADOS specifically. I think that it's a very relevant conversation. Um, I, I didn't do a long video last time. This may be a little bit longer, but I'm going to try to keep it under 45 minutes. Speaking directly to the understanding of who we are as ADOS. You can go back and read the literature from my ADOS 101, but the part that's lacking from a Hebraic aspect is identifying who the people are. So I just want to run through a couple of scriptures and then show that reparations are justified not only in wisdom of Solomon. We're going to go um, to a couple other places and also show the that the city, I'm sorry, or the nation that has done those things that the eyes of the Most High are upon them, and that they must compensate them. That it's not an un that it's not a righteous thing when they do these things. So if you don't mind, family, I want you to just rock with me. Uh, and, and the reason, another reason why I feel like ADOS is valid is it has to do uh, with the 400 year prophecy. Um, I, I don't believe personally that, you know, in the, at, you know, August 2000 and, you know, 19 is how people are going to, we're going to get up and walk out or be ushered out of the, out of Babylon. I don't believe that because it's not what the scripture says. Uh, Genesis 15, 13 says that after 400 years, that nation, he will judge. So we're beginning to see uh, the footprint and the, or the handwriting of judgment on the wall. A lot of, uh, tri uh, tri well, catastrophes are happening all around the United States that are being suppressed. You look at the frogs in Florida, you can look at the flooding of the Missouri River all throughout Nebraska, this bomb cyclones, all these things that they say are just, you know, uh, products of global warming and the environmental extremes. Yeah, I'll just let them put that, put those titles on it. But we here with a certain level of understanding of, of biblical uh, context, we know that those things are prophesied in the scripture. So... <clears throat> If you don't mind, family, let's just rock real quick. Um, ADOS stands for the American Descendants of Slavery. Shout out to my brother Tone Talks, uh, Antonio Moore, my, my, my sister Yvette. They've been at the tip of the spear. I'm just supporting a little bit of scriptural analysis as to why it's valid, why they should have the wind at their back and take courage that what they're saying is a righteous thing. Um, once they add the component of who they are, which I'm going to show, as well as keeping the commandments and having faith in Messiah, which is the reason why we're here in the first place, by the way. So those aspects have to be attached to it for those uh, from a Hebraic understanding of who we are, not just the church, because I grew up in church all my life and those things are lacking. They say that, well, as long as you come to come to Christ and you believe in Jesus, everything is going to work out. That don't matter. That's a lie. And I tell you that with great boldness, without timidity, without hatred, that is a lie. Because we're going to read a 2,000-year-old prophecy from the Messiah. And then we're going to read an over 4,000-year-old prophecy. In the meantime, because from the time that the Messiah spoke about a people going into captivity, they went, <coughs> excuse me, which was the fulfillment of a 4,000-year-old prophecy. But that's enough talking, almost five minutes. Let's roll, family. Pull out your sword. Uh, pull out your Bible. Check me. Um, if you got a comment, leave it. Um, I try to check it. I don't check it often because I'm just kind of busy, but um, I don't do it to try to get no name for myself. It's just that the scripture says that a man should hide his folly uh, before he hides his wisdom. And I understand this. I get it. So I'm just trying to share to try to help other people understand it quite possibly. Some people going to disagree. And that, that's fine. I will not engage with fools and crazy people. I, I don't have time for that. It's not a valuable conversation. You see what I'm saying? I just ignore you. Maybe hit you with a couple scriptures. Boom, boom, boom. Be done. All right. Uh, the Gospel of Luke, uh, chapter 21 
and verse 24. And they, uh, this is when they asked the Messiah what was going to happen at the times of the end. And he's going through it. So let me tell you why we are where we are with ADOS. And for those that just say that we're just under grace, so that doesn't matter. Uh, that's, that's false doctrine. And they, referring to the Israelites, referring to the tribe of Judah specifically, if you go back and you read the context, correlate this with Matthew chapter 24 as well. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and they shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the other people or the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So he said that they're going to fall by the edge of the sword, and they're going to be led away captive into all nations. So the question is, what people in the last 2,000 years were led captive into all nations? Put in the comment, boys. What people? And if it ain't us, then who? I'm not talking about being led away into Europe after they fled Russia, after they shut down Khazaria um, and Kaz... No, we're not talking about them. Led away means slaves. Who were slaves led into all nations, not just Europe? All nations. So he says that this was going to happen because there was a prophecy that was on a book. The scripture says, I think in Matthew 5, that not one jot or tittle of the law is going to pass away until all be fulfilled. There's a lot of unfulfilled things in the text family that we have to go back and reconcile before you just try to jump to a rapture and it's going to be all right in the by and by. That's not what the scripture says. So the Messiah said that these people are going to go into slavery even after he had died and resurrected. Yeah, but they would not just disappear or keep from being a people. So you want to know how they were going to get into slavery? Glad you asked. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 28 with, ooh, turn right to a hallelujah, which is a great uh, passage that you should read in your leisure. It's like front, front page article for our people. <clears throat> Uh, verses 1 through 13, chronicle the blessings, which everybody wants, where you be blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed going to be your storehouses, best going to be your land, and your store, the fruit of your body, the head and not the tail, lender not the borrower. Yeah, we quoted that in church. Everybody wants that. But that is if the Israelites were obedient to the covenant. Now, chapter 4, I'm sorry, verse 14 through 68 chronicles. The curses. So let's read the very last thing that he says. He put a book in on it to make sure that nobody else could fulfill this prophecy. Over 4,000 year old. Um, years old, I'm sorry. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And Yahuwah. That's that's the name of the most. High, Yod, He, Wah, He. Uh, that's what we call him. Psalms uh, 68 and 4 tells you that his name is Yah. Um, and Yahuwah will bring you into Egypt again with ships. How? With ships. A-D-O-S. Brazilian de descendants of slavery. Jamaican descendants of slavery. Bahamian descendants of slavery. Canadian descendants of slavery. All of them. That's how you got here, right? By ships. Okay. And the Most High will bring you into Egypt again with ships by way whereof I spoke unto you, and you shall see it no more again. There you shall be sold to your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. So we're going to be sold to our enemies, family. These people are not our friends. You can say what you want. You can try to hold hands with them. But from the time that we've encountered them, they have been extremely hostile. I'm not talking about every individual. I'm talking about the nation. They have been our enemies. Look at everything that they've done and we've tried to overcome even uh, constituting us as three-fifths of a human being. And if you go back and you read it even further, you'll see that the Catholic Church, Pope Innocent, wrote, um, I believe it was Pope Innocent, wrote edicts to enslave our people. But first they had to be baptized into Christianity. So that's why we don't rock under that Christian vibration because we know how it all started. And that the Portuguese got those edicts from them. But we see that the prophecy said that we were going to, Messiah said that specifically the Israelites, the Yahudim, the Jews were going to go into slavery. And we see the scripture how they would get there. So you tell me what people were sent into all nations via ship. And if it ain't us, then who? If it ain't ADOS, then who is it?
Put in the comment boards. Because it didn't happen to Europe. They didn't get there via ship. They walked. Train, boat, whatever. I don't think they went by boat, but uh, they didn't get there by cargo ship. And you may say, well, well, brother, they this is uh this is the United States. That just you just read that it said he was gonna bring you into Egypt again with ships. So um what when you think of Egypt, what do you think of? Sand, pyramids, yeah, pyramids. What about um, obelisks? Yeah. Mystery religions? Yeah. Check. America got all those. Look on the back of your dollar bill. You got a pyramid. Go to Washington. It's laid out just like Egypt. You got the Washington Monument, which is a huge obelisk that lines up perfectly with the Capitol or, or the White House, one of them. Laid out by, a, by a, a brilliant Israelite, Benjamin Banneker. They say that they stole slaves. They stole jungle bunnies and, and men from the bush and all. How is it that we can do come up with all these great inventions without education? They stole carpenters. They stole engineers. They stole doctors and lawyers. You got to know who you are, brothers and sisters. We are the kings and the queens of the planet. So the reason I wanted to pull those scriptures was to try to undergird the ADOS movement to show that we got here via slavery because of a prophecy, because our people disobeyed the most high. So to fix that, you got to go back to being obedient to the most high. And let me pull one more scripture, Revelations 14 and 12. Revelation 14 and 12, it says, here is the patience of the saints. Everybody is not a saint. Just because you call yourself a saint or you got a statue in Rome or in the Catholic church, that does not mean that you're a saint. Read Jeremiah 50, I believe 50 and 5, it talks about who the saints are in Psalms 137. Who the saints are, those that have come into covenant with the Most High. Here are they that guard the commandments of Yah. And have faith in Yahushua Hamashiach. That's what we have to do as ADOS. Is come back into the com uh, into the covenant, keeping the commandments, and have faith in the Messiah. And one of the commandments is to remember the Sabbath. So that's not what the church teaches. They teaches that the Sabbath is Sunday. But if you read the edicts from the Roman Catholic Church, which the Protestants protested to come out of, they say anybody that keeps Sunday worship, you're by default a Catholic. So not going there. So that's who we are. We are ADOS. We are the descendants of slavery that was prophesied that it was going to happen to our people. Now I want to go and I want to read a couple of scriptures to show um, that uh, America has to pay because what they did was unrighteous. So I want to run through a couple of scriptures on that because I did a quick video um, on Wisdom of Solomon chapter 5, which I'll try to recap. But um, I want the understanding to be complete. Also, what must be complete is the fact that when we talk about reparations and repairing damage, there's usually something that has to be a financial component. And you should be insulted when anybody tries to tell you that they're going to do social programs or do baby bonds. Man, to hell with all that. When the so-called Jews or the Europeans, when they left Germany and the United States is still sending them money today. When they compensated the Japanese for internment camps, they gave them money. The Chinese that were over here, they gave them money. The Koreans, they gave them money. The Native American Indians, they gave them money. They gave them an economic floor to support them, to compensate them. So don't talk about how we should get a program. I don't want your program. And let me take it further. I don't want your money. A lot of us understand that hyperinflation is coming because it's a fiat currency. It's based on nothing. So you can't give me nothing. I want gold, silver, precious metals, loose diamonds. That's the compensation that we asking for. And then I want to leave. Unapologetically. Say it without blinking. Compensate us and let us go. Where you going to go? Don't worry about where I'm going to go. I'm going to be led by the spirit. 
because I can't say that I'm Israel. I can't say who my people are, how we got here, and then disconnect myself from the land and think that we can live in Babylon forever when we know that judgment is coming to Babylon. You don't believe me? Go to Amos. Amos chapter 9, verse 8. I'm going to bang it out real quick. Amos chapter 9, verse 8. Behold, the eyes of Yahuwah, the eyes of the Most High, are upon the sinful kingdom, and I will destroy it from off the face of the earth. You tell me what nation is more wicked than the United States. Give me one. You can't tell me Russia. You can't tell me China ain't more wicked than the United States. America put put their, one of the number one exports is pornography. They go across the globe promoting um, tolerance and LGBT rights, withholding uh, financial uh, financial uh, benefits to other countries unless they line up with their LGBT um, Q agenda. Man, that's unrighteous, man. You can't try to make another nation line up with what you believe. They're pushing that. They're pushing hip hop is one of the greatest exports. And I used to bang hip hop. Part of the greatest hip hop generation. Unapologetically. But I know that if I listen to a rap CD and do everything that Rick Ross, Jay-Z, Drake, whatever, whoever, uh, Future, do whatever they telling me to do. I could receive a 25 year bid in prison. I could go to jail for life, for murder, for selling drugs, taking Molly Percocet, all that dumb crap. But who tells them what type of content should be in their music? Mm. Who owns the industry? Who's the CEOs? Who's the executives of the music industry, of Hollywood? And I've been there. Who's been the executives of the pornography industry? Who running it? Hmm. Yeah. The Jew ish. It's them that's running it. That's controlling it. That's trying to tell you a vision. I don't want their vision and I don't want their money. I don't want the way that they break down the scripture. I don't want none of that. <clears throat> so I know that America is controlled by the, the Zionists that tell you you can't even speak against Israel. But man, I am Israel, according to the scriptures. I can't speak against myself, fool. Anyway, the eyes of the most are upon a sinful kingdom to destroy from the face of the earth, saving he will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob. He's not utterly going to destroy his people. Why? Because some of us understand that you got to leave Babylon and are willing to leave. Because they have to pay, because they have not made um, things right with our people. They have to repair the debt. Let's go to Amos. Amos, woe unto you. Woe unto you. Babylon. Amos chapter 2, verse 12. Woe to him that builds a town with blood and establishes a city with iniquity. And that's exactly what they did. The United States was born in blood, bathed in blood. Bathed in the blood of the Native American Indians and the slave. So you have to compensate us for that. It was bathed in iniquity. Iniquity ain't just sin. It's your attitude toward it. It's what your heart says about it. I'm not just going to um, break the law. I hate the law. I hate that the rule is in place. So if you say that the white man wrote the Bible, which I have conversations because our people have been miseducated indoctrinated to keep you away from the scriptures. How did the white man write it? Then he wrote this in Exodus chapter 21, verse 16. He that steals a man and sells him, or if he be found in his hand, he shall surely be put to death. Yeah, that's the consequence for stealing a man. So the fact that we say, hey, compensate us, that's a small thing because you stole us. You're a thief. John 10 and 10 says that the thief cometh to steal, to kill, and destroy. And that has been the nature of our relationship with this country. They steal for no reason. Proverbs 6. Man, let's go. Proverbs 6 and 30. I, I got I to I gotta go there. Proverbs 6 and 30. We talking about thieves. We talking about thieves. And how they, they must need compensate us. So... Let me put a highlight over there. Proverbs 6 and 30. Hallelujah. 
talking about the thief, how they must pay. Men do not despise a thief if he steals to satisfy his soul when he is hungry. Is that the case? No, they were just lazy. They wanted free labor. And the way that they murdered us, the way that they sodomized the men to buck bust them, the way that they just go out there and just rape our women and the men couldn't do nothing about it, the way they killed our women, cut fetus out, then stomp on them, the way that they lynched us, castrated us, sodomized us, destroyed us, mis, uh, miseducated us. And what, for what reason, what did we ever do? What is the cause for such treatment of a people? You played music and we danced. Or we played the music and danced for you. You told us how to dress. We start dressing like you. We put on a top hat stinging that that will keep you from killing us. They tell the young boys, pull up your pants. They won't, they won't kill you. You a damn lie because they was killing us back then. When we was rocking wigs. When we was had on croaker sacks. No threat to nobody. But you look me in the eye, boy, I kill you. I whistle at, we whistle at a woman and they kill us. A la Emmett Till, Fred Hampton, Eldridge Cleaver, Philando Castile. What, what is the reason for this butt naked hatred of our people? It's because we got the curse of innocent blood on this family. Maybe it was your ancestors. ADOS that stood on Golgotha and told Pontius Pilate, give us Barabbas and let his blood be on us and on our children's children. And that's why you suffering. Yeah. Gives it a whole different meaning, don't it? You can't get out of that, even though you might have faith in Messiah, which you should. What you got to turn back to the covenant, which turns the curse. But we got to do it as a people. Individuals then as a nation. Oh, hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 31. But if he be found, he shall restore sevenfold. He shall give all the substance of his house. So if you're saying, well, wait a minute. Elizabeth Warren said 100 billion or 100 million, whatever, to up to 6.4 billion, trillion. If they do that, then America's going to fall. And what? The scripture says that they should restore sevenfold, excuse me, and give all the substance of his house. They owe us everything. Everything. Because they got free labor and they were able to stack, 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 stack. Look at the wealth gap. Look at what Brother Antonio, Sandy Doherty, um, Yvette uh, Cornell, look at what they bringing out. Look at the data. You can't get around it. Man, it's, it's, it's bulletproof. So the scriptures say they should repay us sevenfold. If you look back at, uh, what is it, uh, Exodus 22, 8, it says that if a thief be found, he at least got to give back double. Double. So y'all owe us, and it's a righteous thing. You have to repay the eyes of the most eyes upon the sinful nation to destroy it. We read that in Amos, Amos 9 and 8. It's on there because they've been able to stack up generational wealth and we have nothing. The bottom half of our people are worth less, worth less than, what do you say, like $1,000? The average uh, uh, black American or Hebrew makes family household makes less than $37,000. But then you have the outliers like Oprah's, the Jay-Z's, the, 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 the Dr. Dre's that are that 1% that own more than 50% of the wealth just between those three or four people. So it's really not an accurate representation of the condition and the plight of our people, but they give you those people to put them up there as if it's aspirational lifestyle. We don't want that lifestyle. We don't want it. We want what y'all owe, then you can let me go. I'm good with that. So that being said, we went to Habakkuk. Um, I think it was, let's, let's, let's hit Malachi. Let's hit Malachi. We're talking about woes because America has did this. They built this nation by blood and they must compensate us. Woe unto them, Malachi chapter two, verse one. Woe unto them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. What type of wickedness did they do in the beds of our ancestors? Raping our women. Raping the children. 
which is a, a, a very, you know, nobody wants to deal with that, with the pedophilia that was happening. With the homosexuality that was happening. They don't want to deal with that. Why? Because that's their culture. That's Greco-Woman culture. That's why they got all the little children in church that's naked. And then they'll put them in your Bible naked. That's wicked, man. Cover that up. But those are people that you're dealing with. That's why we reject it and don't want no part of it. And this Bible wasn't part of it. This Bible predates uh, European incursion into Africa. It predates the Greeks controlling the world. We already had these scriptures, family. Daniel, read Daniel 7. Prophesied of every, uh, which was our ancestor, which prophesied of every kingdom that was going to come. Down unto this last one, the fourth beast. Daniel chapter 7. There ain't no five beasts. It's the fourth beast. It's still the Greco, still the Roman Empire. Made out of iron that's vicious. That's wearing out the saints. Hallelujah. Malachi. I'm sorry, Micah chapter 2, verse 2. Uh, Woe to them that divides uh, iniquity. There's that word again. It's their attitude toward the Torah, toward the laws of the Most High. You want to know what they are? Go back and read Deuteronomy 5, Exodus chapter 20. Those are laws of the Most High. Nobody can change those. And uh, work evil on their beds when the morning is light, they practice it because it is in the power of their hands. A lot of things that they've done to our people was because they had the power to do so. They, were, they, they control us. But if you look at the opposite, Deuteronomy 28 says that there's not going to be any might in our hands. I can't determine who gets a loan, who goes to the, um, where they can go to school, where they can live. and all. We can't determine that. Who can be educated with who, but they can do it. The, the power is in their hand. Verse two, and they covet fields. To make to take them by violence and houses and take them away. And they oppress a man and his house, even a man of his heritage. They oppress a man of his house and they take it by violence. What haven't they take, taken by violence? They take everything by violence. And then they try to preach Dr. Martin Luther King to you to be nonviolent. That don't work with me. Mm -mm. No, we not nonviolent. Because you're not nonviolent. I'm not advocating violence on anyone, no. Or saying that I'm going to do ABCD, no. That's not what we're saying. We're saying that if, if something happens and we got to deal with it as men, we deal with it as men. I'm not going down there to sit at nobody's damn lunch counter so that you can throw hot coffee on me and slap me around. Nah. I ain't letting you sick no dogs on me. You out your damn mind. Just to hold hands. So if I want to hold hands with somebody that hates me, what do I think about myself? And this is not an attack on that generation. I'm just looking at it in retrospect. I have conversations with my daughter about it who's 13. She looks at it like, wait a minute. Dad, we did this stuff for nothing. Because now we're going back to everybody wants to have their own business. We need our own de uh, dentist practices, doctor's practices, uh, superintendents, mayors. We need our own stuff, which everybody else practices but us. We were sold a bill of goods, man, that, that ain't valuable. And so, like, that's why they killed King. He says, I feel like I integrated my people into a burning house. Yeah, it's burning. It's on fire. And the flames are about to be fanned a whole lot more because ADOS is here and it ain't going nowhere. You must compensate us. And it's a righteous thing. And don't just sit up there and say that, that you love God and that it's going to work itself out. If you believe in the God of the Bible, the God of the Hebrews, where he says uh, unjust weights is an abomination to him, you got to balance it out. Where's the justice? Where's the equality? You have to compensate these people for the damage that they suffered. That's a righteous thing. And if you think that is not righteous, then you're unrighteous. You don't understand uh, the most high. I don't care how much you go to church and jump and shout and it's going to be all right in a by and by. No, we going to get ours on this side. So saith the scripture. Let's finish it up. Finish up with where I started last time. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 5.
Go back to the last video. Thank you to everybody that did watch. Um, I just wanted to understand it to be complete because um, some of our wisdom, some of our, our thoughts on this matter is fractured. It's not complete. It's a righteous thing. Let mm. Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians. Where is it at? Second Thessalonians. Um, I'm reading out of a different version. I just want to read it word for word, family. Uh, where is it at? I can tell you what it say. I can I can quote it. Man, where is it? Second Thessalonians one and six. Here it is. Thank you. Seeing it is a righteous thing that Yahuwah with Yahuwah to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. Let me read that again. Seeing it is a righteous thing to the Most High to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. So they've been they've been troubling us, and it's a righteous thing that He recompense it. And yeah, that's New Testament for you guys. Oh well, you know, grace and it's gonna be all right. No, they got to recompense as well as repay and repair the damage. And that is a righteous thing. Wisdom of Solomon chapter five, verse one. Then shall the righteous man stand up in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him and made no account of his labor. That's what we're doing. But standing up unapologetically saying, man, y'all owe us. And for some of us, like, I don't want your money. I don't want your programs. Don't try to give me no infrastructure. Don't try to give me no damn Bernie Sanders, Kamala Harris, Cory Booker. I ain't rocking with none of y'all. We're going to hold your feet to the fire and make you deal with it. Don't get distracted with R. Kelly. Don't get distracted with um, Jesse Smollett. Don't get distracted with the NBA, with the NFL, with the uh, Oscars. They didn't gave more people grant uh, Oscars. To, I don't care. I don't want none of that. I'm focused. Like Yvette said, like you got it. Got like advocacy. It's a drumbeat. It got to be going. You got to keep going all the time. Beat, 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 beat. You see what I'm saying? Advocating for our people, telling you to turn back to the Most High, telling you to pay us what you owe us, telling Pharaoh to let our people go. We rise up with great boldness. And when they shall see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear and shall be amazed at the strangeness of their salvation so far beyond all the, that they look for. So they're afraid of this. They don't want to compensate us. You see fear on both sides of the aisles. Republicans, Democrats, blacks, whites, even the Mexicans. Everybody's scared. Oh, man, we can't put them on top. Then we won't be able to spoil them. If we got money, we can set up our own gas stations and banks and everything. And they won't be able to spoil us. We don't need your Korean beauty store. Don't need none of that. That levels the playing field, family. And they scared of that. Great fear. Oh, well, what about America. America's going to go down. We won't have white privilege no more. No, you won't. All that's coming to a head. And that's a righteous thing. Because the, the top, the bottom has been the top and the top has been the bottom. It's been inverse, but it's getting ready to change. I'm telling you. ADOS. Not just Americans. All of the descendants of slaves. All of Israel shall be saved. But what was done in America is different. We in the belly of the beast. A lot of us have been traumatized more than others. We're not going to argue um, like debt or um, who suffered the most. Nah, it's just that it's different, man. It's just different. So what must uh, to fix it has to be different. So we're trying to get into the scriptures to fix it our heart condition first so that we're not hardened so that we so that we don't hate people want to murder and kill people nah man not from it hear the spirit of people when they speak hear if it's fearful hear if it's hatred it ain't hatred it's just declaring boldly that you gotta pay we're not letting you off the hook because the most high ain't gonna let you off the hook and we're telling you verse three and they repenting of groaning and anguish of spirit 
shall say within themselves, this is who he whom we had at times in derision and a proverb of reproach that goes right back to Deuteronomy 28 chapter. How we are a proverb. We are reproach. They hate us no matter where we go. Proverb or byword. You can go anywhere and say hallelujah. They know what it is. You can say dollar. They know what it is. You go to China, to Australia, to the, the corners of, of South Africa, to Liberia. You say nigger. Yeah. It's a proverb. It's a byword. They know what it is and they know who it is. So that's prophecy. And they held us in reproach. We fools accounted his life as madness and his end to be without honor. They sure did. And they're fools for that because they got the wrong people in place. They think that the people over there in Jerusalem right now are the real Israel. But they're not. That's why nothing fits. And you are sending tax dollars over there to support Israel. And they're not even Israel. But you believe in compensating evangelical Christian. But when we rise up and say, we can show that it happened to us. We can show that it was a greater offense. It lasted longer. The psychological effects were more damaging. And you say, we don't deserve compensation? You out your mind. Anyone that will be against ADOS is an enemy and the devil, your adversary. And you don't understand the ways of the Most High, period. I don't care if it's your preacher, if it's your imam. I don't care what religion you are. If your religion don't believe in balance and injustice to hell with it, I don't want it. It ain't righteous. We don't have no religion. We got culture. This is our culture. Let me hurry up. We fools accounted his life as madness and his end to be without honor. How is he numbered amongst the children of Elohim and his lot is amongst the Kodashim, amongst the saints? We are the saints of the Most High. Go back and read Jeremiah 50. Or is that Psalms 50? Yeah, yeah that's Psalms 50. Psalms 50 and Psalms 137. It'll tell you about who the saints are. It ain't everybody. It's not uh, people that, that the Roman Catholic Church decided the saints. The scripture gives you the context for who the saints are. But it's our people who are going to be numbered amongst the children of the Most High God and of the saints. Therefore, have we erred from the way of truth and a light of righteousness has not shined on us and the way of the Son of Righteousness rose not upon us. No, it didn't. But it's rising now. We're rising in great boldness saying ADOS is valid. It's not going anywhere. And to those that are fighting, that are advocating, may the wind of scripture be at your back to say that it's a righteous thing. That you continue to advocate. I'm not a politician. I don't get involved in it. I'm not a lawyer like Tom. I haven't been involved on, on Capitol Hill like, like Yvette. I'm not. That's not my desire. But what I do desire is to understand the context as to who we are, why this is happening to us, as well as the next piece of the puzzle to fall. And part of that is the reparations of our people and the scriptures has prophesied it. I could go into Isaiah chapter 60 that talks about that. Specific, maybe I will. Isaiah 60 real quick. Just a couple scriptures. Um, Isaiah 60 and 1. Now, I'm not going to read it all. I want you guys just to read Isaiah chapter 60, 1 through 10. You should read the whole chapter. But it talks about the, the compensation of our people. How we're going to receive gold and silver and incense, camels, dromedaries. How the forces of the Gentiles are going to be gathered unto us. That's compensation. And for my brothers and sisters that are in the culture that say, oh, well, the Most High is going to do it. He, he, he's going to make it happen. You're correct. However, he uses men. He is not going to rain down gold and camels and silver from heaven. So if that's what you're thinking. We need to adjust that. He uses men. He will use governments. He said kings are going to come to us and are going to bring us on their shoulders 
from afar. The forces of the Gentiles in verse 11 um, are going to come. In, uh, let me read verse 11. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 11. So in order for kings to do it, there has to be governments in place. So that's why I said the political aspect of ADOS and the scripture, they correlate, they go together. Therefore, your, your gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day and night that men sh may bring unto you the forces of the Gentiles and that their kings may be brought for the nation and the kingdom that will not serve you shall perish. So that's saying there's still com political opponents that's going to be in place at the time when we receive our compensation. So it has to be of the most high. So. I just wanted to share that family so that the understanding is a little more complete. I could go further into the reparations and maybe I'll do that on another video because ADOS is valid. We're encouraging our brothers up in Canada, the, the Afro uh, Mexicans to rise up. They need to have a, a MDOS, Mexican descendants of slavery, because they can show how they were tracked there by some of the conquistadors, by the Spanish. Spain should be paying them. Britain should be paying our people. Germany should be paying. Germany just apologized to, to I can't remember, somebody for slavery and for colonization. You got to pay. Keep your empty words, back it up with money, just like you do the Europeans when you um, or the Asians when you try to right a wrong. There's a financial component. So that being said, all praise to the Most High Yah and reverence and deference of his only begotten son. Thank you for listening, for taking 41, 42 minutes out of your day. Or you may have to break it up. It was a little bit longer, but um, I pray that the Most High was glorified. Um, if that there was no error. Um, I try not to communicate anything out of a spirit of hate. Don't hate anybody, but you got to understand that we bold over here. We are lions. We are lions from the tribe of Judah. We will not compromise. I will not bite my tongue. I'm going to tell you the truth whether you like it or not. And I know most people won't like it. Which one of the prophets did they like? And I'm not saying that I'm a prophet by any means. I'm just a brother. Don't need no title, but I do have wisdom. In understanding when it comes to these end times and I'll continue to share as I'm led everything we don't share on camera you don't let your enemy know everything that's madness so now um, the most I bless you may he cover you with his wings uh, may he provide you safety according to Psalms 91 as you keep the commandments of the Most High Yah and have faith in the Son, like we read in uh, Revelations 14 and 12. Just how we started. The Most High bless you and be with you. Shalom.